I'm Gina Jordan, and I am sitting here with Sports Illustrated supermodel Julie Henderson. And coming up on this very special episode of In the Mix, we go one on one with Sports Illustrated supermodel Julie Henderson. Actress Sean Young, plus Bravo reality star Ramona Singer, serves up some housewife gossip and reveals her latest project. Here we go. You are in the moment. You are in the mix. In the mix with Chris Rock. I'm Alec Baldwin. I'm here with the gorgeous Gina. I'm Larry King, and you're watching In the Mix. I'm Kelly Ripa, and you're watching In the Mix. I'm Matt Lauer, and you're watching In the Mix. I'm Kathy Lee. And I'm Hoda. And you're watching In, in the, the mix. mix. I'm Bethany Frankel, and you're watching In the Mix. In the Mix. Welcome to this special episode of In the Mix. I am sitting here with supermodel Julie Henderson. Come on, guys, get into it. <laughs> That's right. We're in the middle right now of the Billy Joel tribute event, and it's a tribute basically to all of his music. And this event is benefiting two huge charities out here on Long Island, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society and the Michael J. Fox Foundation Team Fox Foundation, which is incredible. Thank yeah. you so much for being here well, today. Well, thank you for having me. What do you think of our set? It's pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. I feel like in Morocco. I love that she, somebody finally got it. <laughs> she got my set. It's like we've been doing this for how long? Everyone's like, well, it's Balinese. No, it's Moroccan. Moroccan. Thank you for yes, that. I feel like I need a tea. We usually have where somebody makes margaritas on set. Oh, well, that's better. So, yeah, which, yeah, is, which better is kind of fun. Too. It has nothing to do with the Moroccan vibe, but, hey. but um, he Nobody can say today. no to margarita. It's true. I, I can't say no to a margarita, I don't know about you. You actually live in the Hamptons, right? Yeah, I have a house in Southampton. Cool. How long have you lived in Southampton? How did this all come I've up? been coming here for about five years, but not to Southampton. I've been a Southamptonite for about three years, three summers now, and I love it. You're from Texas? Yes, I'm from Houston originally. Houston, and you started your modeling career when you were how old? About 13 or so, and I did a little local work, and then when I got a little older, 15, 16, they decided to ship me up to New York and see how I would do. And I never looked back since. You haven't looked back since and you've done incredible. You oh, thank are you. you have the Sports Illustrated brand in yes, front of you and that's and that's something that just keeps rolling along. Now we do something on this show that's called Memory Lane. And we'd love to do a little memory lane with you. Okay. Because that's fine. we have some interesting photos that we'd like to oh, share geez. with everybody. I'm a little afraid of this now. No, no, no. <laughs> Here's Julie Henderson at three years old in front of the Christmas tree. No, I would not be second. surprised. <laughs> we got him from your mom. So we're going to do some memory lane and, and we'll, we'll take a look and see what we got. Oh my God. That body. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. That's a gorgeous photo. So do you remember? When I remember this year. This was last year and we did this for the um, Nature Conservancy for um, to help preserve beaches and make them clean again and all the water and we shot in the gulf this is in apalachicola florida I tried to say that three uh, times apalachicola <laughs> i'm from florida but oh, i can't really? say apalachicola coral springs oh, okay. shout out to coral springs florida and so this was early in the morning and the sand it was so powdery you could just yeah. roll in it and be like a covered donut oh my god i you just opened up a lot there the covered donut <laughs> thing i'm not even i'm not gonna go there but <laughs> Gorgeous shot. So Thank this was you. pretty recent. Yes. It recent. Is. What's going on in your in your mind in this moment? Are you just in a, are you in the zone doing your thing, or were you actually having fun on the shoot? No, I, we always have fun because the photographers, the editors, the stylists—they're always so fun, and it's the same people we always work with. So cool. I have about seven years with them. So every time we shoot, it's kind of a big happy family again. Nice. Right, so you. let's go to the next photo. Wow. I actually have that bikini now. You do? You yeah. They gave it to you? Yeah, they did. So which, I wore so, it yesterday, actually. That's so funny. You yeah. wore it. All right, so th this is one of your Sports Illustrated, the pictures that made it into the Sports Illustrated issue? Yes. Which issue was this? Do you remember? This year. This, this was, was this year? Yeah. Oh my god, you look gorgeous. Thank you. This is in the fun. Seychelles. So gorgeous. it's probably one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. But um, no, you look absolutely stunning. So do they actually give you the bikini after you shoot? Or is it something you got well, later on? sometimes we can randomly favorite one and right. they'll gift it to you. Or... You look so beautiful. Thank you. So how did you find out about the Sports Illustrated gig? How did it come about? It came about, I went to their office the first time eight years ago and they didn't choose me the first year that I went in. Wow. And so I thought that was it. I'm never going to get it. So I came back for another interview process the following year, and that's when I started seven years ago. How does the interview process go? How, what, what it's a casting, and then they ask you back to come in because it's all about personality as well. They because you have to do TV and commercials and all these interviews to promote the brand. So they want to make sure there's 
someone decent, I guess. Yeah. Yes, and there is. We can see that with oh, you. Oh, thank you. No, you're delightful. Now, you've been modeling with the Sports Illustrated brand now for how many years have you started in? Seven. For seven years. Yeah. And do they tell you each year that you're going to make it into that year? Or once no. you've done it, that's it? Once you do yeah. it, you don't even know what pictures make the issue, if any. Um, so you could shoot with them and never make the actual issue. Wow. So. so when you're in it, you're like, thank you, God. Yes, and you count how many pages you're in. Really? <laughs> you're like, oh, they still like me. They I'm in like four me. pages this right, year. Right. <laughs> what up and coming projects do you have going on right now? I have a swimsuit line coming out. I'm collaborating with Boss to Surf and doing cool. a capsule collection. The suits come out in February, March, and then I'll do a whole uh, resort, like cover ups and shorts and whatever. Right, yeah, so it's a really fun process. Super models in general that you're inspired by, like when you were a little girl that you were like, tell me like. I love Heidi Klum. I love Chrissy Turlington. Um, Giselle, I mean. I know, Giselle, stunning. You, oh. That's all you have to say. Seriously, her body <laughs> is just beyond. She, was Giselle ever in Sports Illustrated? No. She never did. She did Sorry, Secret. Giselle. <laughs> Julie's got one up on you there. But she was a Victoria's Secret <laughs> angel. Yeah, this is true. So, she was. We'll call it even. Any campaigns up and coming? That's I have Gans. I do Gans a lot. Okay. Um, they're a regular client of mine. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to do a collection of bathing suits of swimmer? Was it? Well, it was Sports Illustrated. And being in them, when you try on probably a hundred suits a day, you kind of figure out which, what works and what doesn't. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, for me, what works is just anything that holds it up. <laughs> and doesn't pinch on the sides. Right. Yes. See? The women look at you and they think that you're just perfect. So how are you able to say, well, this is the kind of bathing suit that you should have? It was just my personal preference. And then I, I loved Basta Surf as their suits. I have probably a thousand of them. Right. So I knew the materials were good. The cut was amazing. Right. So I approached them wanting to do a capsule collection and they're close friends of mine so they oh, love the idea as well. Is it a line that's meant for more fun or for to be flattering for you know any It's specific? a line that it's cute and fun but you can also go surfing in it, you could go swimming, you could be oh. really active in it and you don't have to worry about the top coming off or the right. bottoms or all of it all together. That's the worst when you jump in the water and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> underwater trying to put everything back in place. That's happened to me before. I don't even want to say that is the most embarrassing thing. So it's practical swimwear yes. for the supermodel. <laughs> exactly. There you go. So all summer season you'll be out here in the Hamptons? Yes. Very cool. Yeah. Well, we are so happy that Julie Henderson came out, guys. Give her a big hand. Thank you. Woo! Thank you so much. All right, so there's lots more coming up, so don't go anywhere. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Coming up on In The Mix, we go down memory lane with Sean Young, who reveals what it was like working in Hollywood alongside Bill Murray, Harrison Ford, and Jim Carrey. In The Mix. This episode of In The Mix is presented by the Clam Man Seafood Market Caterers. Live musical events, Broadway flying high in the Hamptons. Hollywood's go-to space out east, home to VVH TV and quality award-winning programming. I love the studio. East Hampton Studio. 2012, here we go. Bam! From a private intimate wedding celebration to a Hollywood movie set, East Hampton Studio is the ultimate raw space that can transform your event into reality. 35,000 square feet, 46 foot ceiling. High quality system out here, which is uh, concert quality, theatrical lighting capabilities, the beautiful LED screen that you see in the background. For your next event, think out of the box. If you can dream it, East Hampton Studio can create it. In the Mix! Hey, welcome back to this very special episode of In the Mix. And I am sitting here with none other, the one and only, Sean <laughs> Young. Everybody, <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> Sean Young, you made it. I did she indeed. She made it today. I did indeed. And she's got this lovely 1920s vibe going on. I love it. What do you think of our set? I, I love it. It's great. It's, it's going to be a big party tonight. I, I know. Think. It's kind of fun when we do these things in the middle of an event. It's always interesting. We just did Memory Lane earlier in the uh -huh. show. And so here's Memory Lane with Sean Young. <laughs> so let's go to our first. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I, I look at this. This is from the movie Stripes. Oh my god, that is a memory, isn't it? <laughs> That's amazing. That movie, I started work on that movie November 20th, 1980, which was my golden birthday. I turned 20 wow. on November 20th wow. in 1980, first day of that movie, Stripes, and we were shooting at Fort Knox, where my dad ran away to it when he was 14 years old to join the Army, in Louisville, Kentucky, where we shot it, which is where I was born. Wow. I love that shot of 
I mean, you <laughs> really gorgeous. But what was it like to work with Bill Murray? I love Bill Murray. Well, I, that was at the very beginning of my career, and Bill had a lot of chops working on Saturday Night um, Live, and I had zero chops. And so my experience of it was that I didn't have a lot of chops to keep up with when they would change the dialogue. I'd be like, where'd, my, where'd all my dialogue go? And I didn't know how to make it up fast enough, so I sort of got stuck behind uh, the EM50 driving it around throughout the movie. <laughs> would you have done it differently today? No? no, it's fine. I mean, you know, he's that movie reminds me a little bit of Ace Ventura in that when you watch it within the first five minutes, you're laughing. I mean, it's hilarious. Hilarious. So I, I, I like that I've gotten to be in quite a few comedies. Comedies that make me happy. Yes. And they're fun to go to work. But they're hard. Making people laugh and doing it well is hard. It's not easy. Comedy, I always say, when you shoot something and you think it's funny, it's never funny. <laughs> And you think it's funny while you're doing yes. it, and that there's a that was stupid. So it's very challenging to do anything comedy. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Well, I know I'm a big fan of yours, and I thought that film was fantastic. So um, yeah, I think it's, it must be a good memory for you, right? Yeah. So, all right, let's go to the next photo. What do we got? Ooh, is that from No Way Out? That's from No Way Out. No Way yeah. Out. When you look at a photo like that now, you know, and you look back on your career, you have a, a big Hollywood career. What goes through your mind? Is it a good memory? So a lot of it is. The actual doing the work was always the best. Amen. You're yeah. so right. It's yeah. all the yeah. the, BS the promotion and the and the politics and the egos. That was never my forte. <laughs> and um, you know what I what I like also is that there's a record of it. You know, there's a, you can stick it in and you can actually watch it. And, and I and I think that in time. Um, a lot of my work will be watched in a hundred years. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Look how gorgeous. The, the pull the hair scene. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Wow, you look so young in that shot. Do you remember? I am young in that shot. How old shot. are you in I'm that 20. shot? I'm 20. Wow. It's 1980. Baby. This is, of course, Blade Runner, which was one of your iconic films. I think Shania is in Blade Runner. It's the film I got to do that I really consider the... I, I, I hope and pray I get to do more um, great, great movies, but of the ones that I did have the opportunity to make, it's probably the finest one that I did get to make. Harrison Ford. What was it like to work with Harrison Ford? Well, that particular scene rather challenging because he's got the big, heavy, rough beard, so, <laughs> you know, bristle on the face, it's kind of like, oh... Wow, that hurt. Did you stay friendly at all with Harrison Ford after shooting the film? I think so, yeah. We've run into each other a couple times. I think now my, my goal now is to actually get out a little bit more. I, I relocated to the East Coast. I feel a little bit more comfortable here because I started here and I started um, my training in New York City. And I have a place in the city now and it's... Um, it's sort of getting to that time because my, my teenagers are 14 and 17 and I'm getting to that place where I realize they're going to be moving on into their life and I need to make sure that my life is, is um, gearing up so that I'm concentrating on myself because I've spent a lot of time focused on them and now I'm going to sort of switch that focus back onto myself, which is challenging after you've been a mom for a lot of years. I'm sure. What do we have? What next we put? <laughs> Ace Ventura. Yeah, that was a fun movie. Jim Perry was yeah, amazing. Jim in that. Great. Do you remember? Working? Yeah, Jim's great. Jim's a gentleman. Really? Yeah. He's a funny gentleman too. They didn't want me for that part originally, and Jim said, "No, no, we're gonna have Sean." Cool. And they went, "No, no, 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 no," and then he went, he went. Sean Great. and he just he just sort of wouldn't take no for an answer you know and so he's been one of the only leading men that I've worked with who has um, kind of been protective of me and the thing is is you do as a woman in the business you really rely on that kind of uh, level of manners and, and manliness from the from the men that you work with and hopefully they man up and they you know, they, they act like gentlemen. So Jim was very much a guy who was very supportive and made sure that I did get to play that part. What a career you've had. Yeah. 
I mean, when you look back at, the, at some of the biggest films that, that you've uh, started and co-starred in, you really had an incredible career. Yeah, and you, I did, and, I've, and it's not over yet, which is good. I did, I did sort of uh, lose my enthusiasm temporarily, and I think uh, that was one of my inspirations for leaving the West Coast. I just felt like I wasn't being um, understood, and, and, and I just got tired of that, and I feel much better in the East Coast, on the East Coast, and much better understood. In, in September, I'm gonna make a film with uh, the director, Fred Carpenter, and I get to be the lead in that one, so that's the first lead that I get to be in fantastic, quite a while. Fantastic, yeah. How does that feel for you? That, obviously, you're excited about that. I think the older you get, and you get an opportunity, the more you appreciate it, mm -hmm. so I definitely appreciate it a lot. I play the daughter of a, of a mob boss, and there are some twists all throughout it that you don't expect, but it is kind of a female, I wouldn't call it emancipation, it's a, it's a female rules at the end of the day type of picture. You like that? You know? I think what's interesting is that you have had the Hollywood experience, now you've come back over to the East Coast. What makes you choose right now the projects that you're choosing? What inspires you? Well, a lot of what inspires me actually is sort of seeing this incredible talent in Generation X because you have a lot of people now that can make a movie for a lot less money than it has traditionally cost right. to make a movie. And Generation X is a very creative generation and they understand that they have to work with a lot less. And so the movies that are coming up now have to have content. They have to be about something. Right. It's not like waste uh, two hundred million dollars on Transformers. Right. You know, it's right. like I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but I mean, <laughs> I get a lot of Gen Xers that come up and say, "I have this script, read it," and I read it and I'm like, "Wow, that that's actually about something." Mm -hmm. You know, it's about an issue, and you see this uh, trend among Generation Xers where they have to come up with really good ideas in order to make up for the fact that they have no budget. I saw a movie recently uh, called Compliance with Ann Dowd. Loved it. I know that budget was this big, right. you know, and it's wonderful. I'd, I'd pick that movie over Prometheus in a minute, you know, and, and I mean, how much money did they put in Prometheus, you know, and you look at it and you kind of go, well, I like Michael Fassbender, you know, but right. I mean. Right. This is the kind of stuff that I think would make you a fantastic talk show host. Yeah, I, I think really so. do. Well, we are so excited that you were able to be on the set today, and the party's getting started. It looks like there's some fun things happening, so we're going to let John get out there and have some fun at the party. So now you can swing those, those beads around, <laughs> do a little 1920s thing. But everybody, let's give Sean a hand. Thank you so much for being here today. We've got a lot more to come. Don't move. Coming up on In The Mix, we sit down with Bravo Real Housewife of New York star Ramona Singer, who reveals the latest gossip and a shocking revelation about the upcoming Season 5 reunion show. In The Mix! This episode of In The Mix is presented by East End Limousine. It's how you get there. In The Mix! Hey, welcome back to this special episode of In The Mix here at a very special event, and I am sitting here with my favorite housewife of New York City, Bravo reality star, Ramona Singer. Woo! Ramona, I love that you're here with me right now. You know what, I love being with you. Aww. I'm so glad that you came out today to support the Leukemia Lymphoma Society and of course the Michael J. Fox Team Fox Foundation, two amazing charities. My mom passed away of leukemia. I did not know that. Yeah, I know you did. She no. had, um, she had AML, so, because CML is now curable by a pill, but she, she you know. So this is really... It's, it touches, it touches me, yes. You, it's one of those things that everybody's going to have a connection in life when it comes to cancer, whether you know someone that has it or God forbid that you have it, so obviously this is something that's important to you, but you support a lot of different charities over the summer season, and I know we work together for the retreat. Right, domestic abuse I think is a really big thing, so a lot of women, like my mother, was abused and people don't like to talk about it, right. they like to hide it, right. and it happens in all wakes of life, whether you're a white collar, blue collar, very wealthy, middle class, it, it's a lot of families. Well, what's important is, especially for something like you that's doing so many things, is that you integrate the charity aspect into everything that you do, and I know that that's important to you. So we have, I know when you went on, we have Ramona Singer's Pinot Grigio. Yes. And when you went on a, a, a Pinot tour. Yes. 
some of the proceeds of each bottle you donated to the retreat, which I personally was so grateful. Yes, and then I was in another it's state, so I would find out the local shelters in Chicago or Boston and donate it to the local shelters for domestic abuse. And right now, Farah is going to come on. We're going to do a little... Oh, oh I love it. Pinot Grigio in a champagne glass. This is called class. You know this what? Is only, I love it. Only, only on In the Mix we have class here. Okay, so this is... Ramona Singer Pinot Grigio. 2011, which only was shipped into the country several months ago. I this is a new vintage. So this is the new vintage of Ramona Singer Pinot Grigio. Yes. Here we go. Let's do a little cheers. 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 Chin chin. Yummy. Mm, delicious. Right? It's like Ramona's personality. It's got a little bite and a lot of love. Yeah. No, there's no fight. There's I, no did, fight. I did the wine so it was smooth. I know you put a lot into the wine itself. And well, I love wine. You know, wine is always my first drink of choice, and so many of the wines out there are Pinot Grigio, and I just had a bit of a too much tannin acidicness at the end, so I wanted the last note to be smooth. Aside from the Pinot Grigio, you also have a red wine coming Yes, out. as we're speaking now, it's being bottled, and it's going to be shipped on the boat, the Sangiovese Merlot blend, and the last note again is smooth, and it's from Tuscany, Italy, and it's uh -huh. delicious. We have the same price point as this wine, somewhere between $12 and $15, and it's delicious. You know what people don't know? Mm -hmm. That I love red wine, too, but you know why I don't drink red wine in public? I guess on your team. No, worse what? than that. What? I spill it on people, myself. I get the milk lip, because I gulp the wine. I don't sip it. I like to take big gulps, and then I get the milk mustache, the red this wine This is why mustache. we love Ramona, because she's just real. That's what we love about you. You just say it like it is. Now, there are some people you'd actually like to spill your wine on. Yeah, Aviva so, right now. <laughs> really, Aviva? Wait, you see. Really? Oh, no, you have no idea. She has been saying some stuff about you. Oh, this is the worst part, okay? Because we were getting along filming, and then she had a little meltdown or personality disorder in St. Bart's, so all the fans are getting confused. They're like, Ramona, I don't understand. On this show, she's acting like she wants to be your BBF or your best friend forever, BFF. And yet she's saying bad things about you on the Twitter and the blog. She's phony because now she's so angry at me for whatever reasons. I don't think it's validated. Aviva was complaining that you kept bringing up her prosthetic leg, or, and that's well, why she was upset. Well, excuse me, excuse me. She did the show. She said point blank to show America you can have a, a, a prosthetic leg and live a normal life. She actually even went on the interview, the Bravo. She wanted to be on the show so desperately, she actually took off her leg and said, here, look at this. She whipped it off. So before we were filming in the pool scene, she said, Ramona, what am I going to do? I don't have my swimming leg. I go, what do you mean? She says, well, I have a special swimming leg because this prosthetic, they're like very expensive and it can't get waterlogged. I said, you know what, Aviva, don't worry. I will not go in the pool. You don't go in the pool. And I even said, Sonia, Sonia, don't go in the pool. Right. And actually, Sonia and I discussed it. She said, you know what, Aviva didn't care because she wanted to show her body. She does have a great body. But if you Google prosthetics, you ruin your prosthetic by being in the water. I did not know that. Yes. So what would she be upset about you talking about the prosthetic leg? You know what, at this point, because of St. Bart's, right. she's just upset about me, period. And she's putting, um, it's called Displaced Anger. I love all this good stuff about Displaced the show. Displaced Anger. This series has been incredible. Actually, one of the other things was our mutual friend, Luann, yes. the Countess. And we have a clip, right, from, and this is just one of the clips from the season of just you guys basically arguing because you guys used to get along. And now you guys have been arguing a little more? I don't think we ever well, really got along. what it is. You want to show people sure. that aren't sure. Let's take a look. Oh, this one. Oh, my gosh. Everyone knows who you are. Everyone knows you're never home with your children. Everyone knows you're How out. How dare knows. you? So Ramona Singer is an original cast member of The Real Housewives of New York City, best known for inventing Turtle Time and her self-entitled wine label called Ramona Pina Grigio. Oh, my gosh. Light bulb on my head. Pino on my head. Ramona is also known for her world-famous riveting drama on the show that keeps Bravo fans tuned in. I fought with everybody, but the, the difference was this season, the fights weren't like this deep-seated kind of bad energy. I was in the effing point, and now I'm getting mad at you. Why? Right. You're actually disappointing me as a friend. Right. If you have a problem, oh, just tell me what the problem is. That's how she does everything. She does no, because you know what? You talk behind my f***ing back. You don't have the balls to come back here. You were the instigator, Louie. You're always the instigator. I'm not letting you dump this on Ramona. Don't, don't put this, this on me. Oh, nice try, Ramona. This season, the tears and the claws came out between Ramona and Luann. Yeah. 
Well, you know that you crossed the line with me. You know that you crossed the line. Yeah. Of course, this season, uh, I had my issues with her, which I put out on the table, and I tell her exactly what's going on with me. And so I'm very clear, you know, I'm not one that really talks behind. I really confront people when I have an issue with them. So, and that works very well for Ramona because, you know, she just says whatever comes to her mind. So it can be crazy dangerous, but uh, that's the way I like to, to, to move with Ramona. The battle between Ramona and the Countess created nasty rumors and headlines all season long, including hosting separate premiere parties. I said, Luann, Sonia and I are hosting a party. Would you like to also host it? She's oh, let me get back to you. The next thing I know, she's hosting another party and she's going to a charity. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? I would have done this another night. That's Luann. Even some of the new housewives opted to leave Ramona off their guest list. She invited everybody but me. Who does that? Ramona had talked about you were one of the castmates that didn't invite her to go on a trip I or didn't. something. I didn't. It wasn't a mistake. There was nothing lost in the mail. Yet the biggest brawl for Ramona this season is singer versus Dresher. You were more drunk than I ever imagined no, myself in college. Oh, we're supposed to bow down? Now we have a countess. Now we have a princess. Now we have Queen of Eva. You're both white trash, quite frankly. I think that when you travel with people and live in the same house with people, you really learn who they are, just like a boyfriend or husband or, or partner. And I think that it was a learning experience for us. Thanks to Ramona, the season five reunion show, premiering this October, is guaranteed to be the most dramatic yet. Slide off. Can you wear open-toed shoes? I can wear open-toed shoes. Do you wear shoes. sandals? I can wear... Do you have fake toes? I do. You called and threatened me, so own it. What other dirty tricks do you have to pull out in your Pinot-filled hat? I know you guys have been fighting a lot this well, season. Well, this was totally all made up, and this is what got me angry. It's like, you know, she's making things up in her mind. If you want to be angry at me, go ahead. But make it real, make it valid, make it the truth. Don't lie. I hate liars. You know, one thing about me, I don't lie. I do something wrong, I'll own it, but I don't lie, I don't make stuff up. She made that up that really got me angry. What had happened in that? Um, she specifically said, you know, Ramona, you threatened me. You threatened my children. I'm like, excuse me, she has beautiful children. Why would I ever threaten her? I, there's nothing I want from her. Right. She just I, made it up. I remember what you're talking about. I think about. she made it up to get the viewers, because she knows I'm well-liked. I think she's trying to diss me and get all my viewers to be angry at me. Because one thing you never go after are the children. And so she was trying to play with me. I know you guys had been close in the past, though you really haven't been close this season, or you are civil to each other. No, actually with Luann, you know, it was very, it's funny you say that because really this is the first time in the park that I ever filmed with her. I never filmed with her ever, 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 one-on-one, -on -one, never. But there is a scene that she and I actually have fun shopping for bikinis or bathing suits together before we go to St. Bart's. But if you see her out and about in the city, right, you would just, you're still civil to her, Oh, right? no, we're you're friendly. Still... I mean, I'm not going to call her up and say, let's go for lunch. Right, right. And of course, there's a whole scene in St. Bart's where it's questionable if she was with another man or not for the night. Wow. We love Ramona because she gives us all this gossip. We love you for that. But you also have a blog going on that you're doing, Yes, right? well, I have. I revamped my whole website. I hope you checked it out. I'm trying to be more techy. RamonaSinger.com. I do... Um, videos every week, I answer questions from the viewers, cool. I do a blog, cool. I do um, a newsletter, Fine. you can connect with all my, because I'm going on tour with my wine appearances, I'm going to Pennsylvania, I'm going to Detroit, I'm going to Minneapolis, I'm going all over. So what I'm nervous about is the reunion. We are shooting the reunion in September, like five weeks away. And I hear they hired a security guard for each and one of us. No. Yeah. No. They've never done that in five years of Bravo. So I don't know if be, this, this is going to be some reunion. I when don't does the know. reunion come out? When it, does it actually air? It's going to air in October. But we're going to film it in September. And I just got the email. They're hiring security guards for each each talent. Do you think in the past you would have it would have been helpful to have security guards there? Because we never needed them before, so I wonder why they're requesting it. What do you think of our set? You know what? I could just hang here all night and drink my Pinot Grigio. I love it. Just do the girl That's chat. That's what we're stuff. gonna do. That's what we're gonna Let's do. do. We're gonna drink a little bit more Pinot Grigio. Thank you so much. For I love being my girls. Guys, I want to do a special thanks to GoPro. We want to thank South Shore Signs and Graphics. We want to thank oh, I love Canada. the Clam Man. He makes the best stuff. They do. And they deliver. They do parties for you. They're we fabulous. Yeah, and we love this. Yeah, so the great. Clam Man in Southampton, Jean. Oh, I go there all the time. Of course, I want to thank Ramona Singer, Sean Young, and supermodel Julie Henderson. Let's have some turtle time, honey. Woo! Woo! Turtle time. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Give me some. There we go. Cheers, Cheers baby. Next time. Thank Cheers. You.
Peace.